Behind the Shades. Hello, Kate. How are you doing today? Great. I'm thrilled to be here. Thank you for, for inviting me, really. I'm so excited, and I'll sing the song, but I can't sing. But I am excited to have you here because we're going to talk about something that I feel is a well-needed conversation, as well as something that's going to help a lot of people because we want to make sure that we speak to people about self-blame, guilt, and shame. We've all experienced this. And if we haven't, we definitely know someone that has experienced one out of the three and maybe all three. So as we get started, Kate, introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about who you are and where my audience can find you. Uh, my name is Kate Semenyuk, and I'm a hypnotherapist. Have not done that for my whole life, by the way. I have been in many industries until I hit the rock bottom in my life and I decided, okay, I want to help others and I want to help others in a very deep way, which is working with the subconscious mind. 70 years ago, I moved to Canada from Ukraine and it has been one of the most transformational experience for me, learning, diving deep into the different country, different culture, but at the same time, I grew so much in my mind and in my spirit. And people can find me on my website. If they want to work with me, they can book a consultation call. I am very active on social media. They can find me on Facebook, Instagram, and I have a very big YouTube channel where they can watch long content videos. Perfect. Well, thank you for that. And I must say it warms my heart to have a fellow Canadian on the show because I'm from Toronto, Canada. So where are you from? Calgary, Alberta. Calgary. One of my childhood friends is out there. So beautiful place. I was there last April, sorry, last year, April for the first time. And it was absolutely beautiful. And I can't wait to go there and visit again. So welcome, fellow Canadian. Welcome. Thank you. So let's start from the very beginning of your journey. How did you get into this? And why is this something that you are doing today? So about four years ago, I realized that I'm kind of got to the point where nothing really works in my life. <laughs> having a great family, having an amazing relationship, uh, having kids, I found out that why am I still not happy? What is missing? And so I went to see a psychologist and it was a very beautiful experience. And I went on and on and on and I realized like I'm just talking. I am talking and talking and I really want to to make some changes, but something was holding me back until I learned that what is holding me back is my subconscious mind, the 95% of my mind. And I'm working on 5% on analytical and logical mind. <laughs> of course, you know, it's 10 out of 10, your feelings mind is going to kind of win over. And so I decided to go deep deeper in look for methods and modalities that will help me and one session and I found it somehow by by you know maybe it wasn't an accident I don't believe in accidents by the way it was definitely this experience was given to me but I tried a hypnotherapy session a specific method I loved it fell in love with it and I was like I want to do that I want to do that I want to help people and I remember my husband was telling me all the time, Kate, you need to be a psychologist. You need to work with people. You're so good, to, like connecting to them, you know, like kind of building rapport with them. So please, please go. Well, you know, for 10 years, I was kind of ignoring that idea. But when the pain became too strong, that's when we make real changes. <laughs> and that's how I got into the hypnotherapy school. And I dived right into working with clients. So for those who don't know, tell us a little bit about the hypnotherapy. What does it mean and what does it entail when someone is going through it and wants to discover it for themselves? Yeah, so hypnotherapy has two directions. 
One is entertainment hypnosis. It's the one that you probably have seen on the show, you know, Stampede Show or some kind of cafes and bars and restaurants that do invite hypnotists to, to do the hypnosis for entertainment. And that's a, a completely different story from the healing therapeutic hypnotherapy. Hypnotherapy is a journey that you go into yourself and you bypass that analytical mind because we we know already with analytical mind we know everything what we should do what we shouldn't do what we have to do what we could do we know that we have a full potential that we are lovable we are worthy but as soon as the trigger comes we kind of regress ourselves back to the limiting beliefs and feelings and emotions triggers reactions and so working in the hypnotherapy, which is a natural state of mind, the deepest hypnosis is asleep. So when people say, I can't be hypnotized, I always tell them, well, you can sleep, right? Which means you can absolutely go into hypnosis. Everyone can be hypnotized because it's a natural state of mind. Daydreaming, watching uh, Netflix without, you know, when you're going like zoning out, um, sleeping. Uh, this this meditations um, all of these are state altered state of consciousness and that's where you go into the subconscious mind and in the hypnotherapy um, it's a deeper work with the triggers trauma the feelings that were suppre suppressed long ago so if we, if people feel like ah i don't get the result from from inner work from self-development or from uh psychotherapy traditional um you know psychoanalysis um it's good to explore an option that can go a little bit deeper and you can absolutely resolve look at the past with a different perspective because this is what happens subconscious mind doesn't know time so it kind of keeps you triggered all the time but once you go there and you look at your past events with a different perspective that's when you're oh oh i'm not a child anymore i don't have to do that anymore it's like you told me before we started the recording right like i came to peace with everything that happened in my life because i realized that i'm not a child and i'm not out of control right and i have a choice yeah there was a point and i'm glad you mentioned that for those who weren't aware um ken and i were talking um offline before this and I shared a story about my childhood and I grew up without my mother or my father. And it came a point in my life that I had a conversation. I was like, Terrain, do you want to be right or do you want to be happy? Because sometimes you just can't be both. Exactly. So I said, I want to be happy. So some of the things that I was holding on to, I just let go for my own peace of mind. And Kate, you mentioned meditation. There is times where, because I do yoga. I do my stretches, right? And I meditate. I remember there was a time when I first started it. I used to like construct realities in my mind, mm -hmm. right? And I used to just, as you mentioned, zone out. And I would actually close my eyes, focus in, and I would actually live a life that was a little bit alternate to what I go through in reality, right? Um, is that a part of the hypnotherapy? Exactly. It actually tells a lot. Uh, once you told me that, I realized that you have a very, very strong ability for visualization, which means the imagination is so rich, you can create so many different experiences in your mind. And if you direct your mind towards positive, which you did, towards positive experiences, you can recreate it in reality. So visualization, the law of attraction, all of that, people who have, and everyone can visualize, everyone. Some people forget that skill, but for you, it wasn't the case. You had, you were able to go, it's like lucid dreaming, you know, when you are in the dream and you actually realize, oh, I'm actually in a dream. I can do whatever I want here. <laughs> so the same, right? The same, you were able to go so deep and you were able to visualize and these people have an incredible power to manifest. <laughs> so you're lucky one. <laughs> well, not lucky, you worked towards it, but it's an incredible gift 
you know, to have that strong visualization. So that's as well a self-hypnosis. There was a time, to be very honest, when I first started um, doing it, I thought I was losing my mind. <laughs> because it's not really, at least for me, it wasn't encouraged, right? It was something that was, okay, why are you living in your own mind? Are you trying to escape reality? But in a way, I think that helped me to cope with certain aspects of the reality I didn't like. Is that something that you would find true in situations like mine where I'm creating, I'm visualizing what I want to happen in an effort to cope with what is actually happening in my life? I would say both. However, you can turn, usually, if you look at a lot of artists, they started to paint or they started to listen music, they started to make music, they started to sing because they were in pain. They found the hobby because they were in pain, but it turned out to be the most incredible thing in their life. The same for you. Maybe it started as a way to cope with things, but it can turn out to be into your biggest seed for success. So yes, we all start to do something and be very, very engaged in something because we maybe the reality for now is too painful. And however, in the future, if you develop that skill, and if that's the beneficial skill, let's just say music, singing, art, creativity, right, visualization, uh, all of these are beneficial skills. If you develop it to the point of mastery, then it becomes your biggest seed for success and for happiness and for joy. So when you are helping, when you're helping the, your clients deal with maybe some of the feelings, the emotions that they have, right? Like the guilt, the shame. Mm -hmm. um, what are some of the ways that you're helping them perhaps construct a life that they want and then make that life a reality so they're not feeling guilt, they're not feeling shame? Yes. Uh, first of all, it, even before we go into the session, it's good to educate a client that guilt, shame, and blame are completely artificial feelings. They were not the emotions that we were born with. Like we were born with, we know what sadness is, what anger is, what grief is, what um, happiness, joy, and content. But guilt, shame, and blame are socially imposed feelings, which means that we learn them and we can absolutely unlearn them. While sadness you will, we will have sadness. There will be moments in our life when we'll be sad. There will be moments when we will be frustrated, even angry and mad, or, and we'll be super excited, thrilled and elated. But the guilt, shame and blame are not our natural emotions. These are social emotions. So I, when I educate clients, they are like, oh, so it's like not mine. <laughs> you know, they, they, they detach. They detach from this, these feelings. Oh, these are actually, they're, they're not supposed to be with me. And I can definitely work on that. You cannot um, eliminate sadness from your life. You cannot eliminate joy. It will always come because our mind is programmed for well-being. In the end, it's programmed for well-being. But uh, you can definitely unlearn guilt. You will not forget about that feeling, but you can unlearn it. And so when we go into hypnosis, how they realize that it wasn't their fault, that, that the human being is doing best based on the experience they have, that they make choices in the moment. Because subconscious mind is super strong. It only knows now and here. So it will react and make choices based on what, what it knows at that moment. So there was no guilt, especially if people are carrying guilt from childhood. A child, it's not child's fault. But however, the, the, the family dynamic, the, the parents, the, the siblings, the teachers in school, yes, it can be imposed. So it's really important to, for, the, for, for realization. There's nothing to feel guilty about. Nothing that happened in childhood was anything of my fault. 
So to, to, to turn from the uh, victim, from the, from the feeling of fault into the feeling of survivor and into the feeling of a master of your life. Yes, you were out of control. You were out of choices. You adopted every belief that was told to you, whatever, whatever you decided. I'm not worthy. It's all my fault. It's all about me. I have to fix it. But when we grow up, this is where we actually have a choice, a voice, and we can control whatever is happening inside of us. So Kate, for you and your clients, is it difficult or sorry, how difficult is it for them to separate themselves from these emotions that are artificial in a sense? from the ones that are very real, such as sadness, happiness, like you mentioned. Yes, um, there are clients who come to me already with some sense of awareness, some level of awareness. They have meditated before, they have gone on a healing journey, they, are, um, they have constructed their life in some way already. And there are people who are still in a huge pain they're still feeling like there is no way out. So they are still in a learned helplessness. So it's a different approach with those who already at the level of awareness where they're like, yes, I just need to figure out where this guilt and blame and shame is coming from. And I'm just going to program my subconscious mind because I make them the recording and they listen to that recording and they listen to it for 21 days and beyond and they program the mind. It's, it's easier, of course, but at the same time with the people who are still in a state of learned helplessness, feeling out of control, uh, feeling like they, they have, they're still bringing themselves back into the past events, for them, we are doing a little bit of a coaching before, just like you are coaching. Clients, we're doing a little bit of a coaching, so I'm giving them additional resources, additional resources for post-session, before session please sign up for my free course. I have a free online course. Please do this. Listen to my voice. Listen to some of my videos. So educate yourself so that you realize, oh, I actually do have a huge hope I can choose. And so for them, it's like a little bit more of support that they need. And they need a support of a psychologist or a coach in the future. So it's, Did you, it's hard, it's, it's much way harder for people who are still very uh, stuck in the subconscious trauma. Were you able to find that type of help for yourself as well? And that's why you're helping others find it too? Exactly, yes. I grew up in, in the Ukraine uh, with a lot of uh, social standards, expectations and beliefs that were that we're in that in those years. However, um, I found that once you liberate yourself from guilt, and once you accept yourself just the way where every single moment of your life you accept as, wow, I needed this experience. Wow, it, I needed that. Look how it turned out right now. Uh, once you liberate the, um, the amount of the burden that we carry in our mind, the amount of extra thoughts, unnecessary thoughts that we have in our mind, they also kind of fall apart, and like they kind of fall off of you. So you, you've, it's a big liberation when we, when we free ourselves of guilt, shame, and blame. I wonder how, I wonder if there's ever going to be a time where we're just, we don't experience those things on a wide scale because guilt, shame, for many of us, comes from our family, could come from our friends, right? And to a degree, they're used to keep us on the right path, right? Like sometimes you may think, okay, I don't want to behave a certain type of way because it's going to bring shame to myself or my family, my husband, my wife, my children. Whereas the other time, it's like, you don't want to be working this type of job because if you work that type of job, you're a bum. You're a loser. You're not successful. And I know you mentioned that during your upbringing, you had to kind of break the shackles of some of the society's expectations of you. Was that difficult for you? How difficult was that for you to do 
and then realize, hey, I don't want to be this version of Kate. I want to be the Kate I am today. Yes. So uh, difficult, I guess, at that moment, yes, it did felt, feel very, I would say, not difficult, very uncomfortable. Why? Because guilt, shame, and blame is the, it's from ego. And ego is a strong part of us, and it hurts. Oh, it's going to, to, to resist. Once you liberate yourself from any of the limiting belief, any of the reactions or old patterns, or complaining or victimizing or anything it's going to resist because it was programmed for so many years so it was uncomfortable in some ways even painful the neural pathways that we build in our brain when we start to reprogram those pathways it you can feel it on the physical level i remember when i was reprogramming my mind and i felt even a headache because my mind was re oh it was resisting so I would say uncomfortable. Uh, also, it's good to know that uh, there is a price, always. Um, there is a price, what will you pay? What price are you going to pay? And it's not going to be a financial, but mostly a social <laughs> and, uh, and emotional and personal price are you going to pay while freeing yourself from old patterns. What I noticed first is uh, people who were around you and who also felt that guilt, blame, and shame on their own personal reasons, they start to get triggered by you because they feel like it's a little bit selfish, like you don't feel guilt. It's a little, you changed, you are weird. And now you don't want to do this. When you, now you don't want to do this. You don't want to please us anymore. Pleasing personality as well has a lot of guilt. And we need to remember that guilt is very strongly connected to, I think, about two years old when we start to realize that I am. So that's when we um, form our second energy center. It's, it's, it's the second chakra, and it's a lot to do with guilt. So people who have intimate problems, they need to look into guilt, shame, and blame a lot. That's psychosomatic. So the, the people around the society, the environment, the group, even your loved ones, can notice the change and they might not, not like it because that's gonna they're gonna feel triggered so the, 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 there is a there is a price um some friends can kind of fall apart yeah like you know drift away from your life at surprise and some and ego doesn't like it ego has attachments so ego will resist ego, ego will probably even intensify the guilt and blame and shame but once the person becomes very aware that, oh, I know it's my ego and it's a healing crisis. It's called healing crisis when it gets worse before it gets better. <laughs> so it's the healing crisis. They are able to, to work through those, just to breathe through them, to kind of, yes, I'm still going on this self-development healing journey. And eventually it turns out to be beautiful. I remember a friend tried to guilt me this was years ago and it actually happened recently as well and there was a time that maybe i would give in i would say hey you know what they're right and because guilt as you mentioned it's a very very powerful tool and the one that was recent was someone tried to guilt me we talked about this hanging out with people and sometimes they you know you have to separate yourself the person was trying to guilt me and I looked at the person and I decided, let's have some fun with this, right? You know, let's kind of be, I don't want to say passive aggressive, but let's say we're going to have some comedy with it. And I said, no, I don't have to come out because I'm busy and I could be making money. The person said, well, you should be able to do this. Don't you want to um, hang out? And there's all these women here. And this was actually at like a bar, right? Or things of that nature. And I looked to the person, I said, I'm sexy. I don't need to be here. <laughs> <laughs> and the person kind of looked at me and I just said, hey, I just said that just to be quiet because I'm trying to have make light of the situation. But it is annoying because we get guilted into having sex. We get guilted into giving someone an opportunity to be in a relationship, like a first or second date. We get guilted. We get guilted at work by our boss. 
come on, Kate, just, you know, stay a couple of more hours. I really need you to do this because you're my favorite employee, right? Absolutely. We get the guilt comes from every angle if we allow it. Exactly. The clients you deal with, Kate, how difficult is that aspect of them saying that, you know, this is my boundary. I need to make sure that I'm not experiencing the shame from other people, the guilt from other people, and of course, the blame from other people. Yeah. In order to um, release the guilt, we need to understand that uh, people will not like it especially people who use guilt as a manipulative tool. So uh, if we allow the guilt to kind of over overcome, you know, us, then uh, people will use it. And it's not like they are consciously, intentionally using it, not everyone, but there are people who just kind of it's uh, unconsciously, oh, that person is going to say yes anyway. So I'm just going to might as well ask or ask in a direct way or indirect way, but they always said yes. So they probably will say yes. So it's not like people who use manipulative practices, they are doing it on purpose intentionally. Some of them do, some of them don't. It's just when you allow guilt in your life, you start to be a very good subject. When people tell me, I don't know, I don't think I can be hypnotized. I was like, well, you believe about yourself so many limiting beliefs, which means you suggested them to them, which you, which means you are an incredible subject for hypnotizing yourself because you are you sub you you gave yourself very, um, very harmful suggestions. Also, um, there is a big difference between uh, beneficial things and feeling guilty. For example, as you said, sometimes guilt kind of like keeps us on track, right? Kind of keeps us on track so we don't harm or hurt other people or other people's feelings. Well, that's not their, that's not our job to please someone else's feelings. Our job is to do what is beneficial. What means beneficial? It's not good or right, wrong or bad. No, it's not that. Beneficial is something that first will benefit you as a human being. It's not something that is selfish. No, why society might put it as selfish, but it's not beneficial. Sometimes we, um, we say something that might hurt other people, but they need it as well. So it's beneficial. When we say no, people might choose that as a hurtful no. But at the same time, it's beneficial because they need it as well. So we need to separate the guilt and what I'm doing is beneficial. So sometimes we are afraid to hurt others. We don't hurt others. It's their job. They hurt themselves by allowing the words to come into their, especially when they're adults. We're not talking about children. It's completely a different story because children don't have control over their life. They are dependent. So, but however, when we grow up, we take full responsibility for our life. And that's when we can choose. So I choose to let those words in or not. Will I, get, will I allow myself to, to feel hurt because they said so? No. So you don't hurt anyone. You, there is a difference between hurt and harm. Harming is when we are physically abusing, right? We, we are not talking about harming. We're talking about sometimes our words can hurt, especially when we start, start to uh, build our personal boundaries, when we start to say no, when we start to stand up for ourselves, when we start to um, release any, any you know, layers, right? <laughs> of the roles that we played all our life, yes. But um, guilt is possible to work through. People need to see, they need to change the perspective on guilt because people feel like, oh, I can't live without that guilt. It's, it's not possible. No, it is possible. Once you separate yourself, that guilt is a part of you that came into your life at some point and you can unlearn it. You can work on that part. That is well said because I 100% agree especially with the parts when you said that if someone tells you no, you have a choice 
that no can offend you or it may not offend you, right? And I think sometimes we give too much power to words. For example, if I were to say, Kate, let's go here. And you're like, Terrain, I can't go there today. I have a choice. I can be offended by your words or I can be understanding of your words. But if I'm offended of, of your words, that's not your fault. It's my fault. Is that a, how difficult of a journey is that for your clients understanding that they're not responsible for the, for the feelings of others? It's like growing up. You know, it's like growing up. I tell them, if you have guilt, you're still, your logic is 45. Your subconscious mind is still eight. Don't forget, you need to align them together. You need to align them together. You feel like, oh, yes, I'm, I'm a strong person. I have a career. I have a house. I have, and I'm still reacting in, in huge rage, anger, screaming, yelling, attaching, <laughs> having lots of fears, which means the subconscious mind is still there. It's still stuck in those uh, responses. So I, it, is, it is uncomfortable. As I always say, it is uncomfortable. Everything that is happening in a healing journey, it's uncomfortable for the ego. How, however, once you do it, you just it's, it's like working out, right? It's like doing yoga. You just do it. You don't try. You just do it. <laughs> and um, people, people naturally grow up. So naturally grow up uh, when we seek attention from others. This is also, it's still a childhood pattern which means that the person still didn't mature. We are talking about emotional intelligence, right? Maturity of the brain and mind according to that uh, age that we have. So emotional maturity is very important. I always under explain to my clients, listen, it's time to grow up. It's time to grow up. Yes, you had a lot of pain. There was so much suffering in your life. There is an abundance of suffering and there is an abundance of healing. So we need to remember that. It, it's, it's very possible. And some of the ways that people can do that is they can uh, ride the price that they are paying for having guilt. Everything, body, mind, and spirit. What price are they paying for feeling shame, guilt, and blame? They probably have health problems with their reproductive organs. That's guilt and shame is right there because it's relationship. It's the pleasure. Guilt is always self-punishment, right? And the, the secondary role of the guilt is to self-punish. And self-punishment, I, I'm not, I don't allow myself to have pleasure of life, whether it's sexual pleasure, whether it's emotional pleasure, whether it's personal pleasure, whatever it is. I don't allow myself. Guilt is a, is a huge secondary benefit is the self-punishment. So if, you, if, if uh, people were punished in childhood, they can carry a lot of guilt. And it will be right there, right in the reproductive organs. And so they need to write the price, to, to write the price that they are paying, to define what, what, are you, what are you now paying for feeling that guilt? Probably sadness, overthinking, overwhelming, catastrophizing, um, turning different conversations in your mind 24 days after that happened. So there is so much, so there is a lot of price that we are paying. And then do you want it? Because now you have a choice. As you said, we always have a choice. Are you ready or do you still want to be there? Because I cannot, I cannot fix you. I can show you the door, but you need to walk that door. That's what I tell the clients. I can show you where did you form this belief, how to change this belief, how to reprogram, how to heal, but I cannot do that for you. So as we close, Kate, what some advice would you like to give the next generation of people who are trying to figure it out, make sure that they're not becoming overwhelmed or filled with these types of emotions that's going to impact them potentially negatively in their life? Um, going on the personal development journey, any education that the person can get 
any podcast. Podcasts like these, like the, this one. Podcast, anything. Instead of watching Netflix, listen to the podcast. And if you still want to watch Netflix, you need to know that that's a hypnosis as well. <laughs> that marketing companies use a huge uh, manipulative tool, a hypnosis as well, where they put you in a trance and you become very suggestible. So you start to want it. You want to buy it and you want to have it more of that. So really remembering that adults, they control their choice. There's the only thing that we can control is our choice and our, our mind. That's it. We can, cannot, cannot control anything. Um, another thing that people need to realize so that the future for them looks bright, looks lighter, looks easier is, as we talked, let go. Let go, whether you are using physical sensations like workouts, yoga, somatic experiences, whether you're using working on your mind, whether you're using other methods, let go of the past and let go of the future because life doesn't happen there. You are not living, if you're not in the present, imagine you're cutting pieces of your life from your life. When you are sitting in the present, in the past, or you're sitting in the future, you're cutting your life in pieces, kind of drifting through life. And we all want to be happy. Our main desire is to live deeply. And in order to do that, the only way is to present, to ground yourself in the present moment. So practices of gratitude, meditations, connection to people who have, who align with your values, your core values and beliefs, and choosing, choosing every single day, telling yourself, I choose to be with this person. I choose. And then you train your awareness.